You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get the last word. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. This is February the 2nd. 2019 with you today is myself, Carl, the always wonderful Joel. What to say about Nick? Don't call me Sagan. He's so great, so don't stop my bragging. Nick is nice, and Nick is cool. Don't even try to beat him in a duel. We all love Nick because he is fun. Don't worry, this poem is almost done. Nick is great and not even dead. He's the best thing since sliced bread. (laughs) Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, that felt amazing. You're welcome. <laughs> that, Thank a, you, Danny DeKaiser. <laughs> that's a, a mouthful to to have to say every week, but we'll we'll say it. Um, <laughs> Nick, welcome back. That was uh, it. Joel and I had a bet on the game last night. You may have noticed. Yeah. And I don't... the bet was you had to say a poem about the other guy on the show? Yes. Wow. It appears so. That's what it was. And I was I had so little confidence in my team that I have more than half a poem written about Joel. <laughs> <laughs> at what at what point in the game last night did you start writing the poem? Or did you just do it during the massive pregame? Second period. I started I started writing it. Wow, that's impressive. I, d- I wrote mine about six minutes ago. <laughs> wow, that's really good. I know. I got Especially mad rhymes. Bread. Yeah. That's, that is very nice. Uh, I guess that is the, if, if this was Dog Day like in the movie, that would be a great thing to have to relive every single day. Joel retelling that poem, but, uh, be I guess. Great for me. I get to hear it every day. Yeah, Joel would hate everything. I wonder if he would write a different poem every single day. If it was Joel stuck in it, what that poem would be like every day. It would just get would, angrier and angrier. I would not. It would be the same one. It would just, <laughs> every time. It's too much work. You're consistent. You know, much, you know how much, like, you know how much I had to think about that one? A lot. Did you, did you have to look up any of those rhymes or were those all just fresh rhymes straight from Joel? Please. I can't believe you're even asking me that. I mean, it's early. For those of you who do not know, we are recording bright and early, 9 a.m. Calgary time, 11 a.m. Nick time, uh, on a Saturday. We've got some, some scheduling things that have led us to not be able to do it on a Monday or a Sunday. Something about a Super Bowl. Uh, and so we were here on a Saturday. Spending the weekend together. Yeah. It's a great way to wake up and see your wonderful faces in the morning. But before we get to what's happened this week, we got some trades this week. We, we're going to talk uh, about both of those, especially one that happened about, what, an hour and a half after the podcast released last week. So we'll be talking about that. We will be talking about uh, some of the other happenings. We'll put a team in the elimination station. Before we get to any of that... The fine folks at the Alberta Podcast Network are sponsored by Park Power. Park Power is the number one place in Alberta to get your power from because they make it easy for you to switch if you're with someone else right now. They support charities in your community, and they're fantastic people that support their community with initiatives such as the Alberta Podcast Network. So head to parkpower.ca, find out what they can do for you, give them a call, and switch your power because that is a very good thing, especially when it's so cold outside. You don't want your power going off. You want to make sure that you're getting, when you're spending it all on the lights and the heat, you want that affordable. So head on over. Last Monday night, Joel, I uh, I sent you many, many messages trying to get your attention. I knew that you had a, uh, you were on vacation and I knew that you were away. And I didn't want to call you, but I really, really needed your attention. There was something very important uh, that I needed to tell you. The Jake Muzzin trade. What was your initial thoughts now that you've seen him for a game? How do you feel? Jake Muzzin. A, a brand new Leaf. True. Um, my initial thoughts was I can't believe it cost a first, like a bunch of maybes. Like, I just thought, I thought you'd have to give up like something of like 
pretty good value. And I feel like, like, especially for a non-rental. So I was surprised at how low the cost was. It was ground, like, yeah, it was like two second round picks and a first for a pretty good defenseman. Yeah, I was, you know, this is the guy that as a defenseman that's available with term, he would be the one that I'd be looking at the most. And the fact that you gave him up without giving up something from your roster, uh, not that it would have been sad if you had to give up one of those like dozen defensemen you have on your roster. Um, but then the, the prospects, anything that you like, sure, Carl Grundstrom might turn into something good. That first round pick is going to be a late one. Who knows what that becomes? Um, yeah, I think I, I was shocked and honestly mad that the Avalanche didn't make that trade as well. So I, the biggest thing is just, and I think I love that it got, they got them a few weeks early. Like, cause like the biggest thing with like trades at the deadline is trying to get guys integrated into, it's not like, like if you get good players, you're not like super worried, but yeah, you still want them to like, you want to figure out what the roster looks like. And the Leafs are just like, they are just like brutal right now. It is just painful to watch them. And so they like, it's good. They can take a few weeks to like figure this out before the playoffs um i don't know i will you watch did you how much of the game did you watch last night nick i watched the whole thing it was like it was it was just a painful game to watch it was, it was bad hockey on both sides like it was just everyone was really bad and, Very sloppy. which is like typical of like like the leafs do this the last couple years they've done this every year where they just have like a stretch of like I don't know, like six to eight weeks of just like horrible hockey. And, uh, we're in the middle of that right now. It's great times. So it's a good time to do it though. Uh, like it's better now than when you're, you know, closer to the top of the standings and likely going to be in a playoff spot than either at the start of the year and you have to dig yourself out of a hole or going into the playoffs. Yeah. So, so that's, yeah, it is. I'm just, I'm glad, like, I love the trade, basically, when it comes down to it. Like, I'm extremely happy about it. I, I I don't think they'll be able to add anyone else, because, like, they don't, they have to get rid of salary. Like, Dubas will not add any more salary to the team, because he doesn't want any, he doesn't want that cap holdover from last year, so. With the, once the bonuses kick in. Once the bonuses kick in, yeah, he doesn't want that hold over so so he's gonna yeah so i don't think so you'd have to subtract salary which like is meaning like trying to get convince someone to take on ron hainsey is probably like that's the easiest way but like no one's you'd have to give up a pick for someone to take him at this point probably which terrible idea so what you're saying then because everyone the biggest thing that they cared about with jake muzzin was the fact that he uh, you may not know this, Joel. You may not have heard this. Uh, not a right shot. Goodness. <laughs> did you know what? this? Did He's Kyle not? Dub- did Kyle Dubas know this when he made that trade? I I don't think he did because people should have told him beforehand. Everyone's telling him after the fact, and like, come on, come on, Kyle. Maybe Mama Dubas uh, should have told him. Yeah. But did you also know Morgan Riley is not a right shot? Oh my goodness. What is it? I think he should just play with a different handed stick. Like he's probably good enough, right? With Still with that, I I could only imagine if he had shown up to that first Leafs practice with a righty stick, that would have been fantastic. It would have been, been very very anti hockey to troll everyone that heard, but <laughs> That would have been amazing. Babcock would not have liked it. He would have been <laughs> yeah. very upset about that. <laughs> and like just everyone would have been quite con- like, did we trade for a right shot defenseman? Yeah, it was just miserable, but that's the, yeah, I don't know. It's so weird, like, how, I don't think, I think this is one of those things that, like, you're just like, okay, maybe, like, the fit's not, like, it wasn't the exact need that they needed, but Jake Muzzin is a really, really good defenseman, and so they're like, hey, like, we only have to pay this much to get him, sure, and, like, it replaces Jake Gardner. That's the other biggest thing, is that, like, I think before this trade, Jake Gardner wasn't coming back, but this total, like, this, this, like, seals his fate, cause you're just like, oh, Muzzin slides in where Gardner was gonna be 
next year. So and like a moderately amount cheaper too at what Gardner's going to get for next season. Oh yeah, because like what Gardner's probably going to get in the six million range. Yeah, and Jake's coming in at four. So yeah, and I don't know, but I'm guessing Muzzin is better. Like, because everything you hear, well, not he's more consistent. That's for sure. Like everything you hear about Jake Muzzin is how consistent a player he is. Jake Gardner, really good, really inconsistent. Like, really well, Muzzin's good. much better defensively, right? Yeah, he's a bigger body. He throws his weight around. I I don't know. From what I've seen of him, he just seems to be much better in his own zone, which is when you look around the division, he's someone who can play against Tampa's top six. When you look ahead to the first round, he's someone who can play against Boston's top line. So I think it, like, he's not the best defenseman out there. I think it at least adds some talent to the Leafs back end to compete within the division, too. Yeah, like, it was, see, I, like, I don't think, I don't see anyone knocking the trade for the Leafs. I've seen a few people say, like, it wasn't a great return for the Kings. I've seen a couple of people say that it's, it was a good return for the Kings. Like, I don't, I think they could have gotten more, but I don't know if they wanted to wait. I don't know. It was, it was, that's the only thing about the whole thing is it was like, it felt a little weird timing for the Kings. Well, I'm, like, I'm, sh- I'm sure their goal was to get a second first round pick. Yeah, but don't you think you could have gotten that plus like maybe a bit more of a sure thing prospect, like closer I, to the deadline? That's what I would have done. I mean, I think the biggest win of this whole thing is that the Leafs didn't have to give up one of their top two defensive prospects. Oh, yeah. And, and I like, think even asking for Lilligren in that, someone who's not a sure thing right now, um, but better than what they got. I don't know. Well, I like, so if the Le- like, if it had been a first rounder in Lilligren, I'm not even sure. Like, I still probably would have been okay with that. That hurts more, but you're still okay with it. Like, I would have been okay with that trade. It would have been an unfair thing to ask for. No, and I like, but the fact that it just didn't, ha- like, I just, so I don't know what LA's had, like, it just, it almost felt there was just like, we just need to do something. Like, we just need to get it done, is what it kind of felt like, which is weird. So, like, and I don't know, I, I haven't really looked at their roster, but like, if I was, if I'm other teams, I'm looking at their roster and seeing, if they're willing to pull the tra- like pull the trigger on Muslim like that, who else are they willing to like sell low on? Because there's opportunity there. Well, for me, that was that was the return that I would expect if that was a one year rental. Like the fact that you got like it's almost like you get that second year for free. If you would have said we we gave up a first pick and like a couple maybe prospects for a year in a playoff run of Jake Muzzin, I'd be like, yeah, that it's more, but it's not unreasonable. I wouldn't have called you crazy for doing that. Yeah, and so so to get yeah, so I I think and it, it might turn out to be a win for the Kings. They just it doesn't it doesn't look as sure as it could have. No, it does it does help them in the tank job. The one question that I do have in all of this, and it got me thinking as we're talking about this trade, we see it in baseball all the time. Uh why do we not have switch handed hockey players? That's a thing that we could really make use of in a situation like this. When everyone's wanting that right shot defenseman, you've got switch hitters in baseball. Why can't Jake Muzzin work on his skills and become a switch defenseman? I've, I've, I am blown away, Carl, with your just your ideas. Quick, you should become like a development coach. Just do it. I've just... I've thought about that before. I think it's probably coming. Like I think at some point in the future, there are going to be like switch hitters for hockey but i think it has to happen at a much younger age like you can't teach jake muzzin to do it now so you, what you're saying is jake muzzin is uncoachable is that what you're saying nick i mean the leafs are zero and one in the jake muzzin era so it's undeniable those are uh those are the oh, fancy oh and one. Oh, oh sorry oh and one sorry oh, oh yeah i didn't i forgot how precious that uh, point was to you I mean, that's an 82 point pace that they're on with jake muzzin that's <laughs> It's pretty good. <laughs> so the Kings, TBD, we don't really know what the heck they're doing right now. They may or may not be done. Are the Leafs done, do you think? Is this their playoff team? Yeah. Well, they they, they got to they have to acquire a uh, fourth-line center. He's like, that's just the rule. 
that the Leafs have, like, they have to do that for about, for like a third round pick. So I saw, that's coming. I saw someone on Twitter yesterday and I was like, really? That's, that's what we're considering. Someone was like, is Eric Stahl the fourth line center the Leafs are looking for? Like, first off, that's the opposite of, uh, saving money, right? Like, let's go get an expensive center. And also, Eric Stahl for a fourth line center? Pretty good fourth line center. Oh, well, that would be like, like, the Leafs would like have far and away the best four centers in the league. Like they, <laughs> like, they, they probably already have the best three. Like, I, yeah, sure. Can we get Minnesota to just pay down the salary completely? Take Ron Hainsey back, throw in a third or fourth, call it a day. Sounds reasonable. I, I Plus, they could ask him about how he grew up as a Leafs fan. Yeah. Does he have PJ picks? <laughs> it's a new requirement. The, yeah, that was Muzzin has him, so <laughs> don't even picks. question it. Just, yeah, it's, I'm going to leave just, that one. Um, so we're going to just, we're, we got to replace, because we got to replace Marner, because like he's gone, just done. Is that oh. you slot an Eric Stalin for Mitch Marner? <laughs> well, who else are you gonna get? Who else? I guess so. Well, you do get Marner. To, uh, I I don't think, from what I can tell, I don't believe that a team offers sheet him right in the middle of a season. So I think you're safe for now. I think you oh, get okay. him for the playoffs. Don't worry. July one. Yeah, he's not he's not gone yet, Joel. But no, uh, I, but teams are already like tampering's totally a thing now because. Like, nobody cares. Everyone, they all do it. So, like, he's probably got, like, four offers on the table. He's probably already decided. It's done deal. So, what happens if someone like Boston goes out and gets a Wayne Simmons or a Brian Boyle? Are those still done? Is this their playoff team? Yeah, this is their playoff team. I just, they they don't have anybody else. They, they can't get anyone. Like, I wonder be- if Boston's going to go out and get bigger and tougher to beat up on the Leafs in the first round. Sure, do it. We're going to lose. Classic Boston move. (laughs) Yeah. They want to lose just by giving up assets. That's cool. I mean, if Boston wants to add Radko Gudas and Wayne Simmons in the same trade to try to get tougher, go for it. That I don't see that going well for them. You got to catch them. The only thing that you want on defense when you already have Zidane Chara is bigger and slower. Yeah. Don't, don't you have to catch him first? That's, that's gonna be like Simmons problem, or a good problem. You can't, you can't catch Marner. Oh, sorry, he's traded. Can't catch Nylander, he's fast! <laughs> Very true. Well, there was another trade that happened yesterday. Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins made a move picking up Jared McCann and Nick Bukestad for Derek Broussard and some draft picks. Uh, this seems to me like a very classic Pittsburghy trade where they, they take a a piece that's expiring and they trade away some picks and they just get younger and turn back. Uh personally, you know, I'm I'm not the hugest Nick Bukestad fan. Uh he's good, but I love the way that Pittsburgh handled this deal. Uh fantastic move by them, I think. At first I thought it was a bit of an overpayment with all the draft picks, but then when you actually look at the contracts and the numbers it makes a lot of sense. Like they don't have a ton of draft picks next year, but they've got their team for next year. Once they re-sign Matt Cullen to another contract. Right. Like you've, you've moved and it draft picks, they give up two fourth round picks who really cares. One of them was the, the frequently moved Minnesota wild fourth round draft pick that they got for, uh, Jamie Alexiak last week. Uh, another, and a second, right? Like, those are yep. pieces where they, they got talent on their roster. They don't have to worry about keeping Derek Broussard for next year because they have, like I said, younger, probably cheaper, and two of them, right? Jerry McCann, 22, Nick Bukestad, 26. Uh, those are guys that are going to be on this squad for a lot longer. I'm more excited about uh, Florida signing Bobrovsky and Panarin. It's legit. Did they come out and say that's what they were planning on doing? There, they said, like, I think he said to make, like, big moves or big splashes in the, like, off season. Yeah, is he, what he said. He, he said that they, they got the flexibility to make some signings in free agency. 
<laughs> yeah, so like, but like, it it's because it's Panarin and Bobrovsky. That's who they're that's who they're going for. And that's what like everyone's saying is coming out of their their war room. Which is, if you can do that, fantastic. Um, they need some goaltending, right? You you can't just rely on Roberto Luongo forever. Um, but then what are they going to do with their goalies? <laughs> oh, Luongo's retiring. I think that's pretty clear at this point. Is it not? Like, it was- No, he's not retiring. He is injured, Joel. Yeah. He's going on injured reserve next year. Unless he does retire and they have to stick it to Vancouver and make them pay all that recapture penalty, which I really want to have happen. Oh, that's what I just assumed. Like, that's what I think they're just like, he wants to stick it to Vancouver. He doesn't care. You think that guy cares about any team? No, he just wants to stick it to Vancouver. I think he cares about the Panthers. He likes that organization. He does not like the Canucks organization. So yeah, if he can retire and, and screw them with, uh, with some cap recapture, all the better. He makes, he makes, he can stick it to Vancouver and only lose two and a half million dollars. That's how much he would lose to stick it to Vancouver. That's pretty good. Do you think he wants to retire though? Like he's still a pretty good goalie. He can still play. I think he should retire. I, if I were Luongo and I hate it, like, cause he talked about how much, like, Shouldn't sign that contract. How much he hates Vancouver. I would do it just to, I'm, but I'm a spiteful person. So, <laughs> so. No kidding. I would do it just because of that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, it's not, and like the other thing is, is that like Vancouver's not really in a bad spot cap wise next year, I don't think. So I don't think it would be that big of an issue. No, it would just kind of, really it would suffer. just, it would just kind of annoy them, really, more than anything. So, so the Panthers have freed up. Sorry, go ahead, Carl. No, I was just gonna say I don't. If I'm Bobrovsky, sure they want Bobrovsky and Panarin, but like if I'm them, do I really want to go there? Like That's exactly have, what I was gonna it's, say. It's the same thing as all these people who are like Mitch Marner's gonna get offer sheets. I'm like Mitch Marner needs to want to go to your team for you yeah. to sign him, right? It's not like the Vancouver Canucks can be like, hey, Mitch. I mean, if they sell him on, if they have an Elias Pettersson style video like they did for John Tavares to get Mitch Marner to go there, maybe they can convince him. But like, he's probably not going to just show up in Vancouver just because they make him an offer. These guys have to want to go there. And, uh, it's not an organization that excites me. I'm not like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd love to go play for Bob Bugner. That's what I want for my career to go like, to him as my coach. But Bobrovsky, like, I don't know about Panarin, but like, that se- Florida seems like a great place for Roski because, like, he kind of like, like if he wants to go shower early, nobody's like nobody's watching, so nobody cares. If he wants to just go, be like, you know what, I'm done. I've let in a bunch of goals because you guys are awful and you haven't like helped me do anything this game. I'm gonna go have a shower. I'm gonna go sit. I'm gonna have a drink. Maybe have some snacks. He can do that in the ocean. Snow oceans in Ohio. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is not not a problem at all. You see by the third period, you're getting pictures of Bobrovsky sitting on the beach already? <laughs> Bob, what are you doing? We're having to call it an emergency coach. Like, like and Dale six, Fallon is suiting up right now. Player coach. And six people care. That's, like, that's how many people care about it. So, I don't see that, like, I. it makes a lot of sense. Unless, like, unless he's, like, I really want to win... Then don't go there. But I don't know. It makes, it makes sense to me. I, I don't know why, but he doesn't really strike me as the type of player who's going to chase cups. Like oh, I, no, For him, he's, he's looking for a lifestyle, right? Like a good lifestyle. That, and he's going to talk to his buddy, Roberto, and Roberto's going to be like, dude, nobody cares what you do down here. <laughs> <laughs> you... It's like, for all we know, Luan isn't even playing half the games that they say he is. It's just like some, like, body double that's just like, okay, go in there and play for Roberto. Roberto's busy today. And it's like nobody notices because there's literally nobody there. It's perfect for him. It's a shooter tutor. <laughs> like, this is, a, like... Oh, I love it. I I see no downside to this. For, like, Panarin... 
I don't think that's gonna like. He seems like this is not gonna be like. He seems like the guy that gets like upset at his teammates for not being good enough and like, like. So I'm just making up things about these guys' personalities. Now, if you didn't know, <laughs> is is Florida the most okay team in the league? Like they're just. I'm looking at their roster. They're just kind of okay. Oh, they're yeah. They're always like just okay. They're not terrible. They're not good. They're just okay. But Bobrovsky makes them better. Yeah, they like. Oh yeah, and like he might like they they might strike lightning one year and just all of a sudden kind of like put it together a little bit, make a run, and he could like he's the type of goalie he can steal a playoff series if he's like on fire, right? So like, so like, and they don't have like yeah, they they got good enough players to make something happen. That's a I think that's a perfect situation. I like. Of the two, like I'd be very surprised if he doesn't go there. Well, if so. you if you swap Panarin and Bobrovsky from Columbus to Florida, you now have Columbus as the most okay team in the league. So we've seen what Bobrovsky and Panarin can do, right? To take an okay team, they make them actually good. They make them a playoff team. So, yeah, fair enough. I so go ahead. And, oh, I was just gonna say, and then I was like, I was like looking at like Luongo's like recapture stuff. He's going to retire the last year, like, when he's got one year left. Because then, so, like, that's going to be, like, right when Vancouver's ready to, like, ready to contend. And then he's they hit them with an 8.5 recapture penalty. And that's in one, like, one year? Of- one It'd just be one year, eight and a half, in that, like, 2021 season or something like that. That's when... Which is right when, like, Elias Pedersen's deal will be up and they'll have him signed. Yeah. Uh, Brock Besser will be signed. Oh, I'm yeah, excited already. So the mean, only thing is, is that Batman will probably make some, like, there'll be a provision in the, like, after the two year lockout, there'll be a provision to, like, get these guys there. I was going to uh, say, yeah, we'll be locked out for that 21, 22 season. So, uh, who knows what'll happen after that. But I, so, so that's Florida. Pittsburgh, is this going to be the first round pick that Ottawa gets? Is Pittsburgh Ottawa... has Pittsburgh has a first round pick left for twenty nineteen. Like, oh, yeah. do you think do you think they're done, or are they going to make a try and get like Matt Duchesne or because Ottawa still needs a first round pick? They have cap space for this stuff. So yeah, they they actually shockingly do have How much... some cap space, but not a not a ton. They're sitting. Um, Right now, where they'd have to, if they were to take on Duchesne, they'd have to get some back, right? Like they're they only have a half million, but you have some pieces that are a little on the expensive side that you could move out. I think they're done though. Like I don't, I don't look at this team and say that they have uh, a need for something else. They might tweak a little bit. Um, I can see them picking up another like bottom tier defenseman. Really, is the only thing that I see. Their forward core is good enough to to do it. They've got every center you would ever need. With all the guys they just picked up, I'm, I'd be fine if this was much like the Leafs. I would be very okay if this is the squad that you went into the playoffs with. Does Bustad play center? Yeah, Bustad can play center. McCann can mm-hmm. play center. Well, McCann like is a center. So, uh, and then you've obviously got Crosby, Malkin there. So you've got that flexibility yeah. up and down, uh, which is what you want. Yeah, I think they're done. I don't think that like I. Looking at it, like, I don't think they have a ton of, they don't have very much flexibility to make any moves. So they'd have, yeah, salary would have to go out. Which I guess this is one of the teams that does move roster players. We've seen them do it before. So it wouldn't be like the most surprising thing, but I think they're basically done. I'd be surprised if they do anything else. But you, you mentioned the Ottawa Senators, Nick, and they have a number of players continually rumored, right? The two biggest, Mark Stone, Matt Duchesne, uh, free agents for next season. Uh, and if the Senators are not keeping them, which if they're not signed by the deadline, they need to move them, right? You can't just let them walk for nothing, especially after the hefty price that was paid for Matt Duchesne. Um, where do they end up? Assuming that they don't stay, and I would say, you know, Matt Duchesne made a very big point. Uh, when he got traded from the Avalanche, that he wanted to be on a playoff team, he is now not on a playoff team. So I would I would expect to see him go somewhere. Mark Stone, no idea where his head is on this. But where would you think that both of them could end up? Are there 
any particular teams currently in the playoff race that you think are in need of a Mark Stone or Matt Duchesne? Obviously, everyone could use one, but in great need. Those are big players, Tad. What about like a Vegas, maybe? Making a play for Mark Stone? Yeah, that would, like, for sure I could see a Vegas making some sort of move for that because they have uh, a very unti- untypical, great words by me, um, unconventional kind of setup because they have like such a lack of prospects and a lack of depth, but they also stockpiled so many picks previously, right? Like they have that flexibility from that regard that they can make some of those moves and make a, a trade for that, um, much like we saw them do for Pacioretty, which that trade hasn't exactly worked out for them, but. If I'm Calgary, I add something. I don't know if it's one of those guys, but man, like Calgary's in a Calgary like is in a great spot. And so if they don't add, like I think they're making a mistake. Yeah, if I'm Calgary, the the piece that I would be going, right? I don't know what it's going to cost to get Bobrovsky out of Columbus. I don't even I would I would rather have James Howard from Detroit than Mike Smith in net. If I'm Calgary, I'm making a move for a, a goalie is what I would be biggest in for. Yeah, I and I just think, like, I don't know. I think it's both. I think you add as much as you can because, like, you're you're just in such a good position. Like, no one else, like, no one else in your division is, like, acting like they want to win in the playoffs. Like, it's just... So, like, if I'm Calgary, like, I figure out add as many pieces as I can to make this. Cause, like, like, cause you know, like, and I, I know I've said this before, but like, you're moving, like, I think they're going to do everything that they can to move James Neal in the offseason. And so, but like, who are, like, who are they adding to make this team better? Cause this is, like, you have a really good shot to make a deep playoff run. Add a goalie, add another winger, like, Make this fill his team out. Yeah, and they, even if they, you know, you can add a center on that team, right? It's not like they have. It's not like you're slotting Eric Stalin on the fourth line there in Calgary. He would be a an actual contributing player on that team. Yeah, I yeah that that's like that's not a bad that's not a bad move. But like if they if they could figure out a way to do like yeah like get a goalie, I don't know if. I don't know if they're like, for like, Calgary's the best fit for Bobrov, for Broski. If you like, like, he, if they had the cap space, like, that's the guy they should be signing in the offseason. Like, seriously, move James Neal, figure out, give him away to somebody, give him away, like, give him back to Vegas, do something. Give him to Florida. Give him to Florida, send a second round pick and James Neal for a seventh. Yeah. Well, the, the Flames, you know, Mike Smith's going to be gone next year, so that's off the books. They have some flexibility in that regard. They, they get a leg- like the only the biggest thing is they have what's his face, Chuck. They got to yeah. sign him. Like that's the that's the really the only thing is their D is basically they can go into next season with the exact same. D. They have no goalies signed next year, but they only have thirteen. I think they have projected 13 if it doesn't go Mm -hmm. up, which it will go up a little bit, but so they got like 15 million in cap space. But if they can like make, like I said, if they can make like a James Neal disappear or a Michael Froelich disappear. I'm actually very interested in how they do make them disappear. Cause if they don't trade them and they just make them disappear, that is a, that is a very impressive, uh, feat that they've done. Well, there's probably talking to this. I don't know. Who's. I don't know, Penn and Teller, are those guys magicians? I don't know any magicians. Yeah. Tra- trade them to Vegas and, and they'll figure out a way to make them <laughs> yeah. disappear. Yeah, uh, I think Fro League's easier to move, but I don't know how you're going to move James Neal. That's, James, that's a tough one. The problem is that James Neal is a good hockey player and either Calgary is like completely, Calgary's messing this up by putting him on, like, by like, well, he hasn't proved himself. We're going to put him on the third line. I'm like, no, he has proved himself. Don't do that. Like, nobody, like, seriously, 
Like, stop doing this. This is it, not. It's not a like thing. they traded for a different Golden Knight and got William Carlson and signed him. And they're like, it's weird. He's not actually that good. It's not like he's shooting twenty <laughs> percent. Let's move him around. James Neal's done this for a decade. So, so like they've messed it up by not putting him on their t- their top lines. And like, like when you play, when you play players with bad players, they don't perform well. That it's just like, Jay, like I don't think. Has anyone been like James Neal is like a driver? He is gonna drive lines. He like he doesn't need anyone else on his line. I don't think that's ever been his case. But James Neal is a good player, so I think they. I actually do think they could move him, because I think someone out there would be like, "Yeah, this guy's good." But Calgary is just ruining this. When Mitch Marner gets offer sheeted, do you want him on the Leafs? We're gonna want James Neal. <laughs> <laughs> just leave me alone. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm in the same boat, right? I've got uh, everyone who's like, you should offer sheet Mitch Martin. They're like, maybe you should offer sheet Miko Rantanen instead. He's putting up much better numbers. So I'm in I'm in the same boat. I have a guy that people think can get offer sheeted. Everyone's getting offer sheeted. Ticket shots. Or Braden Point. You, I was just, you need to give Marner $13 million for him to leave. Because if you offer sheet him for 10 the Leafs are matching. Let me, like, this is... Stupid. I was actually amazed. Can we talk about other media throwing like their own coworkers under the bus? Please do. Did you see? Did you see that, Nick? With in the? Did you watch the pregame at all? Yeah, the whole when, thing. When Bob McKenzie totally threw Drager under the bus. Yeah. That was. That was like. I'm not a huge Bob McKenzie fan, but like that was like some like media gold right there. He was like, like he like he literally prefaced it with. I don't have any problem with what Drager said because he's probably <laughs> hearing that. But I had a professor that told us never do what he did. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yikes. Like it was, he basically said like saying that people are going to try and all, he's like, Bob McKenzie said, he's like, wake me up when someone actually offers sheets him in Marner signs. Yeah. He's like, that's when I'll care. I'll believe it like, when I see it. Yeah, he's like it's it's exactly what you were saying, Carl. Like it's it's fine and dandy for people to to like give Marner offers. But like you really think Marner's gonna like if someone's like, Hey Marner, we'll give you nine and a half over seven and then he goes to the Leafs and he says, Hey, how about nine and a half over eight? And they're like, Yeah, you really think Marner's gonna be like, Okay, well I'm just gonna sign it over here first <laughs> just to kinda force your hand? You like you think he's gonna do that? There's no chance. There's no chance he does that. It, like I said, it's got to be like thirteen, and nobody is paying Mitch Marner thirteen million. End of my rant. <laughs> glad, glad to be here for you. Uh, do we want? Let's go to the elimination station. Oh yes. Joel, last week you were not here. We put the New Jersey Devils in the elimination station. Joining them, the Ottawa Senators, Los Angeles Kings, uh, Detroit Red Wings. Have they been there yet? Yeah. Uh, you knew that, Carl. Sh- Chicago, wow. Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> yeah. You, I actually, you knew. I 100% did not remember. So, Ottawa, LA, New Jersey, Chicago, and Detroit are the teams that are in the elimination station thus far. Who are we going to add to that this week? Hey, Nick, is your team really bad and not looking at ever being good again? Just, just forgot. Just forgot for a second there. Oh, I actually forgot that they're out of the playoffs. Well, that, I don't know. That's they're, what it felt like. They're on a one-game winning streak, so it's not the worst thing for them. In overtime, anyone can win in overtime. <laughs> they're actually they they they're on a two-game streak. They won right before the break. Everything's looking up for the Red Wings. Yeah, they're looking up all right. <laughs> they're looking up at all the teams ahead of them. Can I make a suggestion for the elimination station? You may. And surprise you all. But I'm really eager to put Edmonton in the elimination. Yes! Station. That's exactly what I was gonna say. I think like they're the they're, they're like the team lowest in st- like points that we haven't put in yet. So So the the lowest in points that we have not yet put in is the aforementioned Florida Panthers. There you go. However, I and I would make the case for the Panthers being further out. They are 11 points out of a playoff spot. The Oilers are only three points out. 
think Edmonton's going to make the playoffs? I'm, I'm willing saying, to take I'm, that bet. I'm saying that they have a better chance than the Panthers do. Oh, uh, yeah, but I, it doesn't matter. In the elimination station, you're either in or you're out. There's no chances. And Edmonton is out. I'm voting, my vote's in Edmonton today. I think I vote's in Edmonton too. Well, I've been outvoted. Yeah. I don't, I don't agree. Let the record show that I do not agree. But this is a dumb here on the fourth line. We can do Florida next week, Carl. I'm excited. They'll still be out. Like when they, when they don't trade for Panarin and Bobrovsky and everyone's like, oh, what are we going to do with that cap space? We're going to pay Matt Duchesne $10 million. Enjoy that, yes. Florida. I'm, I'm excited for you to make the case on why Edmonton is not out of the playoffs. This is going to be great because I've got a lot of reasons why they're going to be out of the playoffs. But I'm excited well, to hear the reasons why they are going to be in the playoffs. Here's the here's my reasons why. It doesn't matter. They're they're in the elimination station. Welcome, Edmonton. Here's the here's reason number one. The team they have to catch, the terrible Colorado Avalanche. Teams they have to pass, the miserable Vancouver Canucks, the shockingly still in it Arizona Coyotes, the Randy Carlisle coached Anaheim Ducks, and the Blues of St. Louis. Teams don't make the play. Like teams don't jump that many people and make the playoffs though. They do when they still have 30 games and only three points back. It is possible. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's doable. You also need all these teams to lose a lot, too. Yeah, like this is... I don't know they're... if you've watched those teams play hockey, Nick. That's very plausible. I know that you're just trying to like reverse jinx your team into a better playoff spot. Congrats, you probably did it, because you always do it. <laughs> uh, but this... Ottawa is not... Not or Edmonton. What team are we talking about? <laughs> I'm just talking about all the like awful teams in this league. Edmonton's not jumping one, two, three, four, five. They're not jumping five teams to make the playoffs. That is not happening. Okay. And- so la- last week, Joel, you were not on the show. We did. We talked about uh, Edmonton with their front office changes, and we talked about some of what they could or should be doing. If you, since we got Nick sauce last week, if you're the Edmonton Oilers, what are you looking to do? this trade deadline, uh, or off season to fix this team. How do you fix the Edmonton Oilers? Uh, I don't trade McDavid because like, that's what I do because I want to see McDavid on a good team and not waste away his years in Edmonton. Um, I don't even, like, I don't even know what you can do. This is another reason why they should be in the elimination station. What do you do with Edmonton? You just you do what you should do. You try and trade everybody. You you don't trade Jesse Puliarvi. That's what you don't do. Even though everyone seems like to want to do that. I don't know. Buy out Milan Lucci and save six hundred dollars a year. <laughs> both both of those dollars will buy a real nice dinner for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hilarious. I don't know. What did you guys say last week? Uh, from what what I recall from last week's conversation, we we talked about the fact that there's not a lot that you can't, right? You don't trade the prospects. You hold on to what you can, and you try to rebuild. You have some medium amount of cap flexibility um, into the future. You try to not ruin that. You make smart free agent signings, um, and you bring in a, a general manager who isn't an old Edmonton Oiler. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. You probably don't sign Miko Koskinen into a three-year, four and a half million dollar contract. I'm all right with yeah. them signing that. They, they, you were fine they, with that. If they, you need someone to play in net, and he's fine. He's good. But did you need to do it for that long and for that money? This is Blake Wheeler all over again. Nobody was lining up to sign Miko Kotsnin to three by four and a half. Oh, don't get me wrong. I do think that they could have got a better deal for him, but uh, I don't hate it. It's just not great. They just need to chill out. Like, stop doing things. Because yes. everything yeah. they do turns to garbage. And it just, it looks like a tire fire. It looks like they have no idea what they're doing. But they just need to chill out and, you know, Oscar, get Oscar Clefbaum back healthy. Same with Andre Sakara. Evan Bouchard's going to be a good defenseman. Well in the draft in the first round. 
and just ride it out. Like, I know that, like you said, like it looks like a tire fire. I know you were recently in Calgary, and you might have looked to the north and said, like, wow, it looks like there's a tire fire. up there. Like, that fire is so big, it looks like there's tires on fire. If you actually drove closer to Edmonton, you would see that it is actually a tire fire. <laughs> Sometimes where there's smoke, there is tire fire. So uh that's why it looks like it, because that's literally what is happening there. But I, I do agree that they need to hold on to something, right? You You don't just give up everything you don't trade your prospects you hold on to them uh and if someone wants to to take a piece right if you can convince someone very desperate for a a defenseman that chris russell is a piece do it but like those are the things no one's gonna take these guys on um you've got a lot of them for a while still um so you just kind of Stay the course and tweak as necessary. Try to sign a lot of, uh, PTOs next spring. Cause they've got, you know, locked up next year for the cap. They already have, uh, only eight million. Probably once the cap comes up, nine or sorry, 12 or so million dollars against the cap. Uh, it's not a lot of flexibility when you have some RFAs to sign too. Yeah. If I was them, I would just stand pat, make it to the off season. Do a good, thorough search for a GM who can come in with a strong vision of the team and just let him execute. Welcome to the Elimination Station, Edmonton. We're glad to have you. Some of us are. Looking forward to the sad Connor McDavid faces when they get eliminated from the playoffs. I think the biggest Edmonton news was that uh, Connor McDavid, after letting his uh, hair grow all season, cut it for the All-Star game. Turns out when he shows up to media that aren't Edmonton, he... He cleans up a little bit. Uh, don't you know, Carl, he had to go get it cut twice. It was one of the funniest parts of the Ulster game. I didn't know that he had to get it cut twice. <laughs> it was in one of Sportsnet's 30 Thoughts columns. He writes that one of the funniest part of the Ulster game was Connor McDavid saying that he went to get his hair cut and then go back to get it cut again because he didn't like it. That 31 Thoughts column has really taken a turn for the worse. <laughs> He's putting way too much time and energy into that podcast he's got. Not nearly enough time into his writing. I just thought, like, this this is the the quality of material we get from these players. If that's yeah. the funniest thing that was said there. Yeah. It's bad. That's, that's why the NHL is a market. I, I did see, actually, uh, obviously Super Bowl this week, and they went down and, and asked, uh, I think it was NFL Canada went down and asked all these NFL players, who Connor McDavid was. Is he an actor? Is he the prime minister or is he a hockey player? And obviously they did not show anyone confirming he's a hockey player, but they had player after player in the NFL, not knowing who the best player in the NHL was. So uh, if you ever wonder where the NHL's at, wonder no longer. The best athlete in the game, not known in the biggest sport. Sad. Maybe if he did more than just get his hair cut and score goals, we'd know a little bit about him. Yeah, he's really not that colorful of a person. No, and, Great well, hockey player. But and yet he's... Tapes. I was going to say, and yet more colorful than the guy he's replacing in Sidney Crosby. Like, yeah. if you're talking about colorful guys, Sidney Crosby does like one Tim Hortons commercial a year with Nathan McKinnon. They ride a Zamboni and call it a day. He won't hey. even do it alone. <laughs> Wait, what has McDavid done? I, feel like, a, I, I don't think he's more colorful than Crosby. I feel like he gives a little bit more in interviews than Crosby does. I like, just, I don't think so at all. I When you saw like his interviews at the All-Star break where he's talking about um, what the Oilers need to do and how he's frustrated and saying things about the locker room and how if you don't want to be part of it, you can go. I, I would never see Sidney Crosby saying stuff like that. It's because he's always on good teams. This, like, Crosby would say stuff like that, but he doesn't have to because he's a winner. Penguins team that he, granted, it took a little less time. Like, that Penguins team he started on was pretty terrible. Yeah, but, like, he was all, yeah, I don't know. I don't think. There was progress, I, though, year, after, year over year on that team. Yeah. It got better. Really quickly. This is, like, I don't, I, I don't know if I'm, like, we're talking about like two like fairly like I don't know outside of the media how like 
great their personality, but in the media, we're talking about two very dull personalities. I think we've gotten more from Crosby than we ever have from McDavid. McDavid needs to like win a little to kind of chill out. Which is Nick's strategy for the elimination station, so it all it all works. This is no Jonathan Taves though. That mm-hmm. guy's guy's amazing. Joel, can can I hear the poem again? No. I only had to deal with on. once. I'll Fine. send it to you. Nick, here's here's what Thank we Nick. Uh we actually have recorded the poem and it's right at the start of the episode, so you can just listen to it over and over and over again. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I'll grab the audio from that and play it at the end of the episode. We're almost there. We're going to pick our Pavel Bures. We're going to wrap up the show. Maybe I'll put that poem at the end again. Okay, I've got a new ringtone. When you call Nick's voicemail, that's what you're going to get now. <laughs> I hate you both so much. Right now. <laughs> so if you, uh, if you want to call Nick, just leave a message. He no longer answers his phone. He just wants you to listen to that poem. That's right. I don't answer my phone anyways. <laughs> the, uh... The Pavo Berets are our must-watch games of the week. And with those, over to Twitter and Play High Sticking, where you pick who you think wins each game and the score of that game. If you're right, you get three points. If you pick the winner, you get one. And if you get one of the scores right and the winner, you get two points. At the end of a session of High Sticking, which I just sent out all the prizes yesterday, sent out a slew of prizes. We finally decided that Canada Post had gotten its act together. We sent out eight gift packages out to our listeners that could be you if you want a fourth line puck or a coaster or Joel says he might have some mini sticks kicking around his house. And if that's true, then there might be a mini stick in it. If it that's not true, then we're all out of mini sticks. Um, I have an idea. I might have one. Yeah, that's so there might be a mini stick left. We might have one last one to hand out. Um, however... We randomly, you get all points, and each point is a name in the hat. We draw a name, which is associated to your points, and you win. So, we're recording this on Saturday. We already have tonight's game, which is Toronto and Pittsburgh, the aforementioned Toronto Maple Leafs and Pittsburgh Penguins. They're playing tonight. Tomorrow we have a game, which is Calgary heading into Carolina, the return of... uh Elias Lindholm and Noah Hand to Carolina, which leaves us starting on Monday. We, we, it's about 25% of the time we pick a Monday game, but since this show's already going to be out, instead of waiting for us to release this episode, you can be watching a game. Monday night, there's a, a plethora of medium quality games happening. There's literally, only one, uh, no, two playoff teams. Two teams currently in the playoffs are playing on Monday night. The Dallas Stars and the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm suggesting they're the playing rare, each other. <laughs> but they're not playing each other. I'm suggesting the rare Dallas-Arizona game for Monday night. If sure. I had to watch a game that wasn't the Leafs, I'd watch Vancouver <laughs> Philly. But I don't really care about any of these other games because... You said, like, medium is, like, I think generous for the like, slate of games. Nick, you good with that? Yeah, I'm good with All that. Right. Dallas, Arizona, Tuesday night, uh, the games, the games start to get better. What are you, what are your thoughts? We've got San Jose, Winnipeg. San Jose, Winnipeg on Tuesday. Yeah, that'll be a good game. Wednesday night, uh, We've got well, strong Ottawa. We've got one yeah. choice. I have a choice. On Ottawa, the other one is Boston, and that breaks the rules. Wednesday night, we've got a battle of the bandwagon happening. We've got San Jose, Calgary. Thursday night. Thursday night, yeah. Colorado, Washington is happening. Uh, Nick, what are you? What are you picking? Um. We already picked San Jose, right? Then. Then pick I, twice below. though. Either Dallas, Nashville, or Colorado, Washington. Dallas has already been picked once, but if, I, oh, I will be they? watching Colorado, Washington. Okay, then go with that one. All right, there you go. Colorado, Washington 
is the game on Thursday, Friday. There's one choice and one choice alone. It is Carolina and the New York Rangers. The New York Rangers back to back weeks in high sticking. Uh, thank you. And schedule maker. Maker. It's just one guy. Yeah. Uh, it's very true. Saturday. Lots of early games next Saturday, Leap. February 9th. Leap. Saturday's hockey day in Canada. That would explain why there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight all. games. Well, I don't know if it explains all eight of them, but it does explain <laughs> every Canadian team playing against each other. Except for Edmonton. Edmonton gets to play San Jose. Edmonton gets to lose to San Jose. Is there one of those matchups that... Should we do that one? Since we just eliminated San Jose? We actually didn't eliminate San Jose. I mean, Edmonton. Sure. Yeah. Right. Look, it's early, guys, toss, okay? Toss him a bone. Just be like, hey, guys, we know we eliminated you, but <laughs> McDavid's really good, and we like watching him, so Saturday night. Go, McDavid! I'm down with that. Saturday night, San Jose and Edmonton, which leaves us on Sunday with a another collection of, I guess, a lot of in-division games. Uh, that night, I would probably lean towards. I love how you said like in division games, and then it's like Colorado, Boston, yeah, I realized Toronto that. Rangers, I literally Winnipeg, realized that. Buffalo. I it's like I started like... at the bottom and saw Florida versus Tampa, and I was like, oh, cool. And then I was like, yeah, it's a lot of weird matchups actually. Uh, there's two in division. We've got Carolina, New Jersey, Florida, Tampa. I want the weird matchup of. The Minnesota Wild and the New York Islanders. That is a <laughs> gross game. We're not watching that. It's, we are. You already. You already like suckered Nick into picking Washington, Colorado. <laughs> no, watching Minnesota. Hey, what, what are you watching on Sunday then? Um, like, I will watching the Red Wings and the Blackhawks for some Tr- weird reason. Toronto Rangers. Sounds like a good game. We're putting the Rangers in high sticking for the as a Pavel Bure for the third time in two weeks. That's there you go. Do it. Or Tampa, Florida. I'm fine with that. Let's like, Tampa, no, Florida. Nobody's watching Minnesota, New York on a Sunday afternoon. Football's done. What else are we going to be doing on a Sunday afternoon? Looking at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tampa and Florida. Is our Pavel Bure for that day, the Battle of Florida. Enjoy. I don't like how Carl took so much control of high sticking this <laughs> week. He's just like he like somehow Colorado got in. And just like every week, every game night, he was like, mm, "I'm thinking this, so this is what it is." <laughs> Not like this. There wasn't that many of those. Oh, like every game. I don't know what you're talking about. You do. You're smiling, and you do now. Just because I'm happy doesn't make it me a just bad because person. You, just because you're excited to see your Washington Capitals play your former team. <laughs> hey, one of them's winning right now, at least. So with those, you can head on over to our Twitter, at Fourth Line Podcast, and play high sticking. You'll get points. If you've won before, you can win again. You can get a different prize. If you've won a puck and you want a coaster, you can do that. If you uh, If you want to win the shirt off Nick's back like Alex did last week, uh, you'll have to maybe convince us. Maybe write another delightful poem like Joel did, and we'll see if he, he'll give you the shirt off his back. Um, it's got to be a really good poem. Joel's is really good. Was was that, so that people know the kind of standard patience, is, is that poem good enough to win the shirt off your back? I mean, he complimented me a lot, and I do generally give away free items of clothing for compliments, so... <laughs> Okay, good to know. Um, so it's a good thing that we don't call Nick the always wonderful Nick. Just every week, he'd be giving us clothing. Get a, a new Why unlaundered it... t-shirt. I have chilled clothing, so this is, this is going to be a thing. I am. Okay. It's all going to be Red Wings gear. It's fine. I can spray paint it. Joel just gets a shirt and paints a giant leaf over every Red Wing shirt. Yeah. Have I, have I said, I don't know if, I, Carl, have I ever told you how my, how my son associates the Canadian flag with hockey? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So anytime he sees the Canadian flag, he just assumes it's hockey. 
is what I'm teaching that the Leafs are Canada. That's why everyone hates Toronto. <laughs> well, head head to our Twitter, play high sticking, head to our website and read some of the great articles over there. Uh, the fourth line podcast.com head to our Facebook and join everyone over there. Facebook.com slash the fourth line podcast. And that's next week for another episode of the show. We will be back, uh, presumably on Monday. Uh, we'll be coming to you with our pre Valentine's day special. Uh, we'll see. Maybe there'll be some more love in the air via poetry. Who knows? Uh, but until then, boom city. Hey, it's Eric from Pop Cycle, the Pop Culture Connections podcast. On our show, we discuss just how incestuous pop culture really is, but in a really fun way. We take a chunk of culture, be it a movie, an actor, a song, a musician, or a book, and then by going as far away as possible by way of six degrees of separation, we end up right back where we started. It's a lot of fun, so if you're so inclined, take a listen. We're also part of the Alberta Podcast Network, so you can find us via albertapodcastnetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts. What to say about Nick? Don't call me Sagan. He's so great, so don't stop my bragging. Nick is nice, and Nick is cool. Don't even try to beat him in a duel. We all love Nick because he is fun. Don't worry, this poem is almost done. Nick is great and not even dead. He's the best thing since sliced bread. (laughs) 